Oh, hello, fellow leaders, and welcome or welcome back to the Elvira channel. For those of you who are new, I'm six foot tall, plus size, and I am a swole Lolita because I'm training to become a pro wrestler. I've been into this fashion for about 10 years, and I have been very lucky to find many, many, many wonderful pieces of Lolita fashion, and not just Lolita fashion, but Lolita adjacent fashion pieces that fit my very large atypical body. So today I'm following up on a promise I made from a previous video. I have four cats. I am what you would call a crazy cat lady. And of course, in Lolita fashion, kitty cat prints are all over the place. I've been a cat print collector since the very start of my Lolita journey. It's hard to find stuff that has cats on it that is also plus size and Lolita friendly, even harder would be to find a cat that actually looks like your own cat. The cats that you see on prints, unfortunately, do not look like any of my four cats. Until now. I have had the opportunity to buy Metamorphose very famous, very popular dozing cat print, which happens to have a cat on it that looks very much like my kitty Kenny. While the other cuts of this dress are not necessarily friendly, the Wallolita cut has been released in plus size. Wallolita is a particular type of styling that can be applied to classic, sweet, or gothic Lolita. This is a more classic interpretation, but I know a lot of Lolitas, and especially Caucasian Lolitas, are very uncomfortable with Wallolita. They think that it's not for them. This may be a controversial opinion. I believe that Metamorphose has made this in larger sizes and specifically targeted Lolitas in the United States states they have made this in larger sizes specifically so that we outside of japan can enjoy this in my mind it is a great example of cultural exchange while alita is the perfect marriage of traditional japanese fashion and the heavily victorian and western influence lolita cut and so i choose to spend my money supporting Metamorphose and their vision of bringing Japanese fashion to the entire world. There is a line that you have to walk with while Lolita. I am going to be treading that line very carefully and not tiptoe into the cultural appropriation zone. So please bear with me. I hope you will enjoy going on this while Lolita journey with me. <laughs> but first, let's talk about this drama. I got this dress late last year and I haven't even tried it on yet. I also haven't coordinated it at all yet, so sky's the limit. This fabric is so beautiful. It's so thick and it's got this lovely texture. This print is so busy. It kind of dazzles the eye. <laughs> the primary colors are this rich red, goldenrod gold, the cream, the off black, which is mostly through the checkerboard, and the true black. In addition to that, there are these almost red burnt umber flowers, purples, and pinks, and greens. This dress is super detailed. It's got these tassels on the front bow. It also came with these two pin-on bows, but these are removable, so these could be attached to a blouse or something. It also came with this little brooch. It has double layers of waist ties, which is something I have never seen before. The back has full shirring. The dress is cut so that it's got these larger panels, which form pleats. And then within the slash, there's this beautiful lighter weight contrast of red. And all along the bottom of the print, there is this beautiful cat who looks just like my Kenny, except for the nose. And there's this little guy too who's got a mustache. And now let's get to the thing that my analytics tell me most of you are here for, blouse suggestions. <laughs> As usual, I want to put this dress to the test and see if I can coordinate it in three different ways. For the first coordinate, I always try to keep it simple, but I suck at simple. So I've decided that instead of trying to be very simple, I'm going to instead try to make the first coordination the budget option. So these will be things that I believe make a good starter investment and are easy to coordinate that can be staples of your wardrobe. I haven't worn the black one yet, but you've seen the purple version of this in my girly gang video. This is the extra large Sakura Deerfield blouse, and this is a fabulous option for people whose busts are up to about 130 centimeters. And this blouse is about $10 after shipping fees. Affiliate link below. This blouse is cheap. It is black, which is a very easy to coordinate staple color. And this dress 
is very commonly coordinated with black because it's very easy to match the many blacks on this dress with whatever your blouse ends up looking like when it photographs. Number two is going to be the mustard top that I rejected last week in my honey cake video. Didn't mean to get your hopes up like that, buddy. I've chosen this one again because it's one of my favorite blouse cuts to coordinate with everything. As always, I get these ones on Unique Vintage. Having a big bow at the neck might really change the first impression of the dress, which is already so detailed. And I thought of all of my color options, the yellow would make the most sense here because it's basically the same color as the goldenrod. Additionally, you can bet this is gonna be one hell of a power clash because gingham plus checkers it's gonna be busy can't wait and here we have blouse number three i used the same centaur blouse in my first three blouse one dress video i already go into a lot of detail about this blouse in that video so i'm gonna recommend that you watch that and i'll try to put a card wherever that goes i'm instead just going to talk about why i chose it for this dress which is not very obvious <laughs> first of all i have never seen this dress coordinated with green and funnily enough this exact green is present in this dress. For the third board, I'm going for tertiary colors. That means the purple, the green, the colors that are in the tiny details. I wanna see if I can bring those out of this very busy print. That'll be our third and most experimental board. Don't worry, Rico. Someday I will find a dress that has you on it. All right, first coordinate. All right, let's just get this cat girl fantasy anime crap out of the way, shall we? Here I've got this Hakama JSK with every single accessory that it came with. The brooch, the front bows, and both sets of waist ties. I figure this is a good place to start since anything here on out will be a derivation of this. Along with my Sakura Deer Field blouse, I've got my wrist cuffs and headband from Taobao. My necklace is bb and Deco. The kitty cat ears are from Amazon. The shoes are cotton candy feet. And I've got on my Me Likes Tea A-Line petticoat. I'm not gonna lie, folks. Uh, I do not like this cord. I do not like how it looks on me. I think because I discovered Lolita during the age when so many people were anti-animal ear, but this to me just reads way too costumey. Um, I'm trying not to repeat pieces though, so hopefully I get all of my costumey cat girl cosplay stuff out of my system and next board I can make it way more fashion forward. <laughs> Based on my first wear, I had some notes about the fit, which I think are worth mentioning as well. On my other Hakama Cut JSK, I've got the plus plus size. Compared to that one, the straps on this feel really short. Ideally, I think I should move the buttons on the straps down a bit because it feels like it's a little too high-waisted for me, and I know that there's a lot of extra room on those straps to move the buttons down, but I don't really have time for that, so I have to work with what I've got. Another thing is that this is so warm. This fabric is way heavier than I expected. It would be very lovely in the winter, I'm sure, but right now, I'm just burning up, and I hope you can't tell on camera that I'm sweating up a storm. Another thing I wasn't necessarily expecting in putting this on was how bulky it made me feel. I think it has to do with the front bow's placement being so front and center and being so voluminous. I feel like this dress makes me look thicker than some of my other dresses. I'm fine with that, but a lot of plus size Lolitas are very self-conscious about their waist and stomach area. Luckily, a ton of the details on this dress are removable from the brooch to the front bows and also both sets of waist ties. All of these things can add to a bulky and heavy feel to the dress. So for the next coordinate, I think I'm definitely going to start by taking them all off and then see what I want to build back on. We will see how it goes. All right, let's get out of cat drag, huh? All right, now that's more like it. I feel like Mary freaking Poppins. As it turns out, taking all of the excess layers and pieces off of this dress not only makes it lighter and more comfortable, but definitely allows for more flexibility in terms of how I can wear it and how it fits my proportions. Here I've got the waist ties separated. I re-added the set that's silky and red, and then I used the other set made out of the check print as 
strap extenders to tie the straps in a halter style without sacrificing any of the bow action. I've removed the massive front bow and the little strap bows, and removing those is great because suddenly I've got a waist. I've been able to move the entire dress down on my body, giving me more room in my bust, and the waist sits more at my natural waist instead of the high-waisted position. I've added the brooch to the bow on the tie of the blouse. In addition to this unique vintage blouse, I have accessorized with Moon Kitty Productions Sailor Mars tights, Summer Breeze shoes by Irregular Choice, this time in black and gold. I've kept my petticoat the same as last time. The gloves are vintage, as are the earrings, and the wrist cuffs and hat have come from Taobao. These vintage gloves are amazing, but I cannot manipulate my camera with them so I've taken one off already and I'm taking off the other. Pro tip, if you've got a wrist cuff just turn it upside down and suddenly it's a glove topper. This coordinate is all over the place. It's a vintage throwback in like 20 different directions and I love it. I feel like Snow White and Mary Poppins had a baby who transforms into Sailor Mars and was raised on a farm. I must say that making the straps a halter and extending them here was like the most brilliant thing I thought of. Both the straps and the waist ties have two buttons that are about equidistant. It worked out really well to just splice the waist ties onto the back of the straps and now I've got these long long straps that look super elegant from behind. For some reason the version of this blouse in yellow really really reads as country in a way I did not expect and adding the straw hat even though the straw hat itself is Victorian style it still very much reads country. As I was getting into this cord I thought to myself how many patterns can I introduce before this gets weird. The answer was only one. I just thought the shades of red in the tights were really cute. I don't hate it though I do think this would be a lot more traditional if I had stuck with a plain white. And I'm not quite sure about the placement of this bow on the hat. I've got this little bit of skin here under my chin and I'm very self-conscious about it. If I hold my head just right, this looks like it disappears, but sometimes it looks really uh, emphasize. I don't know, guess I'm just gonna have to get used to that. And you know, despite it being even busier than before in some ways, it's way more subdued than others. The silhouette is much cleaner here. I do think it's more flattering if the goal is to look thinner. I am certainly more happy with this coordinate than I am with the last one. Guess all that's left to do is decide what this green's gonna pair with and uh, see where that takes us. We met, baby. I know. You don't like the camera? No, she does not. <laughs> All right. Penny has made her cameo. Time for cord number three. All right, everyone. Truthfully, I am not a fan of this coordinate either. It seemed like I was going to have enough purple and or green to kind of balance itself out, but I'm missing several major components in those colors, such as necklaces, wrist cuffs, shoes, and headwear. What appeared in the light of my bedroom to be a sage green is for some reason reading very minty in the early twilight, which is is a shame because I chose my socks based on coordinating with that top when I thought it looked sage. I do have mint socks I could have worn, but oh well, <laughs> lesson learned. So this hodgepodge is a thing. Let's go over what I've got. My shoes are from Bodyline. I've got a different pair of dawn and morning dew wrist cuffs than I usually go for. My purple rose ring, the green ribbons on my head, the red ribbon around my neck, and my socks are all from the Lolita Collective. My crystal ball bear ring is from Automatic Honey. The Be Mine heart ring is something I made myself. The daisy earrings are also from Unique Vintage, and the macaron necklace is a modified Q-Pot strap that I bought off of Lace Market. Once again, I am wearing this dress halter tied, but I've taken the waist ties off and left it with just the straps. I've removed the brooch, but re-added the strap bows at the bottom of the straps where they were originally, and I've left on the red waist ties. You know, I think I just ran out of steam on this one. I started off with some very specific directions of how I wanted this to go and then it got hot and I got sweaty and I got cranky and <laughs> I would say this is another kind of subpar cord. I like some things about it. I definitely love the cut of this blouse 
with the halter tie here, but I have this green blouse in black, I've got it in red, I've got it in purple, I've got it in so many different colors that I could wear instead of the green, and then it would be a lot less work to coordinate. I will revisit this with the black or red version. I truly think the best part of this coordinate is this wig. I am so very in love with this wig. It is so gorgeous. Overall, I definitely see why people tend to stick to black, red, and gold. For coordinating this dress in this colorway it is a lot harder than i thought it would be to bring out those little elements even with a bright purple wig it, you're not really reading the purple in the dress there's just not quite enough of it compared to the busyness of the rest of the print to make it work but hey i'm trying to build a reputation on youtube for being the weirdo experimental lolita and i guess in that way i have succeeded all three of these looks were very different they don't even necessarily look like they're the same dress at a glance i can think of at least another three blouses i really want to try coordinating this dress with so this is not the end i'm not going to give up on this dress or sell it because it's got my baby on it and yes before anyone comments about it i am aware of the Camellia Hide and Seek cat release from Metamorphose that is on right now. I was up at the crack of dawn the day that it was released because I wanted to make sure that I could buy one of the OP and one of the JSK. I got them in different colorways and I do not plan on keeping them both unless they are both absolutely stunning, but I wanted to do a compare and contrast of the two cuts at some point. In a couple of months when I receive that, I will do an unboxing and a comparison of both of those in the plus size version. So yeah, this dress in this colorway is definitely not beginner friendly. I would not call it easy to coordinate at all, especially the further off the beaten path you go. I do think it's a great example of Wallolita, and maybe I just need to get it in one of the pastel tones instead. All right, well, I would love to hear your thoughts on these coordinates. I would definitely say this time around, I have a favorite, coordinate number two. I think it was hands down the best of my three attempts, but what do you think? Maybe you found something redeeming in these other two that you would like to comment on. I would love to hear it. If you haven't subscribed already, I promise my other videos are much better than this one. Please give them a look, and if you like them, please do subscribe. I have a goal set of getting a thousand subscribers. I'm not sure what I'm going to do if and when I reach that. Maybe a giveaway or maybe one of those tutorials I promised y'all that are coming, I swear. I've been having lighting and tripod issues, but I am trying to figure that out. So eventually you will see some crafting and tutorial-ish stuff. I've been Ellie Vira. You, you specifically, have been an awesome viewer. I'm going to get out of Lolita and go hug my cats and eat some corned beef. Bye.